we'll do the introductions. So let's start with the introductions. Maybe you should tell us who you are, names and uh, positions, because we have a large team from the company here. Uh, please go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm Pablo, I'm from marketing department. And I started at Soprano three years old, three years ago. Okay. I am Daniel, I'm from engineer. I have uh, about a one year from company and here in my side. Hello, Mr. Mario, nice to meet you. Very nice. Well, very I'm nice to meet you all. So we have a company introduction webinar today and I'm very excited. Soprano is participating in Exculture the first time for the first time. Uh, so yeah. most of the companies or several companies this semester have participated in the past and some actually participated multiple times. They just keep coming back. But Soprano is here for the first time. And honestly, yes, I, it's our first time. Too. I know what you do. I've seen the description, but um, I still have very limited information about the company. So I suggest what we do is uh, let's start with a quick introduction. So you tell us a little bit about the company, the products, the history, and then students, if you have questions, and I see we have quite a few students watching now. If you have questions, uh, just type them either in the Q&A window or if you want to talk to us, uh, raise your hand. There is a button that literally looks like raised hand and uh, engage in the discussion. We will add you to this virtual room and you will be able to talk to us. And uh, I'm also getting some questions from students who have classes now, could not be here live, but they send the questions via email. So I prepared those as well. And yeah, so we will go into kind of question answer mode after the initial introduction. Okay. Uh... Let's uh, talk about uh, talk about Soprano. Uh, Soprano has about uh, six uh, years, and uh, we work at one uh, division of the company. It's the name of uh, thermal thermal units. Yeah. So um, we work with uh, thermal bottles. Uh, uh, what other products? Thermal dishes. Bottles. Thermal dishes, thermal bottles, bags. Uh, thermal bags, uh, thermal oh, nice. boxes, and uh, how uh, all about this kind of products, you know. Um, and the other units uh, work about um, civil construction, civil construction, um, nutritional. Hardest, hardest products. Then I think he used the expression in this unity who have more contact with uh, the consumer, different than another units. Then it's uh, a little different for us because we, have, we need to have a strategy for develop the products and the market uh, with this communication with our consumers. Okay. And so can you explain a little bit more? So you actually make the products, right? You have the manufacturing yeah. facilities. You don't only sell them. You actually produce those uh, mm -hmm. hardware and uh, locks and uh, the thermal uh, wear, right? We have two, two kinds of business. Uh, we work in we imported the, the items and we develop items. Uh, for example, here in our unit, we work at a thermal box that we produce here. And uh, we import uh, some uh, components like the impulse from the bottles. Mm -hmm. and, and so in these thermal bottles, what goes into it? Because I know your company also makes some metal hardware. So that is relatively clear. You basically bend the metal or mold the metal into the right yeah. shapes and you assemble uh, it. The, the metal, uh, the metal product, tech. yeah, the metal products we uh, develop in another unit. It's like the, the example, the, the example of the name for us is SFF. It's another unit. They produce uh, like uh, locks and um, bed locks, bed locks, hardware, doors and windows. Is it all made in one factory or you have multiple facilities, production facilities? No, uh, it's like another factory. It's totally separated. Yeah. Uh -huh. And all of yeah, that production is our in our own factory. Uh -huh. All of that production is in Brazil or you have uh, multiple all, countries? No, all in Brazil. We have a, a, a kind of... Um, in China. Office, in China. We have an office in China, but uh, all the uh -huh. units that, uh, products, uh, that products, uh, products are here in Brazil. Um, I have a question about the age of the company. How old is Soprano? And 65. maybe a little bit about the history of the company. 
65 years old Sofran. Oh, that's actually quite old. And, and so which of the products was the first one? What, what, what did the company start with? <laughs> we begin, the, the factory begin with uh, musical instruments like uh, Cardinal. Uh, Cardinal. Uh, no, the accordion. I don't know the name. Accordion? <laughs> like a musical accordion? accordion? Yes. Yeah. We begin oh, okay. doing accordion. And uh, <laughs> a few years we begin to make locks and then other things like that. Our unit, the thermalware unit, we started oh, 20 years old. 20 years old, about 20 years old. That, that's a, a lot of pivoting. So if you start with musical instruments, then you pivot into locks, then thermal units. <laughs> that's, you yeah. know, I guess that's life, right? <laughs> yeah. but whatever works, whatever works. Uh, in terms of the customer base, we have a lot of questions. So do you sell your products primarily in Brazil? Do you sell to other countries? We sell our products principally in Brazil and uh, in other countries in, in uh, Latin America, like uh, Chile, uh, Paraguay, Argentina, Argentina um, Peru. Mm -hmm. Peru uh, Is it well, primarily because they are close geographically or different trade agreements or, or some other reasons? It's easier to, to do the commercial business. Right. And I think there, there, there are several trade kind of area agreements within Latin America, right? So in terms of like free trade zone um, or something like that, right? Yes, mm -hmm. we have a, a trade uh, sector here in the company, but we have a, a person here in the unity that uh, works with uh, exportation. Mm -hmm. but percent of our uh, sales uh, is in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Now you, you already saw the question so we have a, a question from Stanislav Gapa about sustainability of your products and I see Pablo um, <clears throat> published or said there that all the bottles are BPA free. Can you explain what that is? BPA free it's like a, a denomination here in Brazil that uh, a plastic that don't have bisphenol in the composition. Yeah. One of the companies we worked with uh, last year uh, specializes in plastic recycling. <clears throat> and so because they are right here in North Carolina, <clears throat> we had a couple of tours of their factories. So several of the students came there with me. And so that BPA thing was a very important thing. So apparently some plastics are more environmentally friendly than others. Mm -hmm. And so for them, that was a big topic. And uh, I don't understand all the chemistry behind it, but apparently there are good plastics and bad plastics and then some pollutants yes. mm -hmm. and stuff. So uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yes. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Also, our products is, <clears throat> our products, all products is BPA free. Yeah, mm -hmm. all, all products from Soprano are BPA free. And uh, uh, another factor that's, that's uh, kind of interesting uh, is that the, our thermal box are uh, from uh, industrialized pro uh, plastics, you know? Yeah, yeah makes sense. Um, a lot of questions about competition. So I assume there are many companies that make similar products globally. Um, who are your main competitors and who is making your life sort of difficult? Um, our first competitor in Brazil, it's more. Uh, M O R, you know. This company in Brazil is so strong that uh, that complicates the market for us. And uh, another company uh, in Brazil that uh, has a, a great um, capability of the uh, developing product is Thermolar, and another um, Invicta. How about the Chinese competition? I mean, everybody worries about China in general, but when it comes to manufacturing particularly, and I assume hardware and thermal bottles, I mean, I think from my knowledge, China is you know the country that makes those things a lot. So is that creating any problems for you? No, in this market, because uh, like an example for bottles. Bottles in Brazil, the, the, the public that buys bottles uh, knows a lot about the the, the brand, uh, like uh, Terpar. They uh, uh, they trust a lot of, a lot of in the mar in the brands Thermolar, and they buy only like Thermolar, for an example. Uh, um, and another thing uh, for uh, thermal boxes, thermal boxes in Brazil, the most famous is Soprano. Uh -huh. they, 
they trust in the mark, mm. the right. brand Soprano. Interesting. Actually, it's surprising. I mean, I wish we had more of your products in the United States. Uh, again, I have nothing against China, but it seems like if you go you know, shopping in the United States, everything is made in China, especially if it's sort of consumer products like, you know, like bottles or locks or stuff like that. So it would be nice to see some competition from different countries. Um, we have a few more questions about competition. So what does make your products more competitive? And then uh, there are a few more questions about profitability. We'll talk about that separately. But if you had to compare your products to the competition, what would be the sort of weak sides and strong sides of your products? Uh, the strongness of our products is um, like, in a, for an example, the, the structure of the product is more robust and um, the colors are different. For example, uh, our compactors use the, the internal parts in white uh, plastic, and the, we use uh, only gray plastic. Uh, do not um, uh, say damage. Do not damage easily like the other colors. Um, uh, for example, we have differential differentials in our product like. The, in the, the lead of the product, we have um, over lead. I don't know how to say that. Over yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 yeah. It's, we can uh, open easily and uh, access the, the internal part of the thermal boxes. It's a difference, uh, difference in our product that the concurrents don't have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a related question is from Warren Johnson. Uh, same question. So uh, uh, if you had to say, what your competitive advantage is like what keeps you afloat so is it only the quality and difference in design or are there any other yeah. things that make you more yeah, competitive principally in design. design quality in design how about pricing how do your prices compare it to the uh, competition competitors products our price is a little bit uh, in the in th this market in brazil is very um aggressive uh for an example we have a, a lower price and our competitors uh, lower their price more. So we fight for the prices of the products. It's a little bit difficult in this, this part of the market. And yep. I think the uh, difference of relevance in the competition is uh, our strategy. We are not special, specialized in uh, this one product. This one product. Uh, like uh, Thermolar is specialized in thermal bottles. More is specialized in uh, ice bottles. Soprano, uh, we are not specialized. We are a uh, uh, generalist. Uh, general right. Then we work with uh, thermal bottles, bottles, thermal boxes, thermal, boxes, uh, uh, thermal dishes. Then uh, when we go in the market, we can offer for our customers uh, more products, then the, uh, I think is a good service for our uh, customers. In this year, in the beginning of this year, we uh, develop another line that complements the other lines we already have, uh, like a, a bat a bathroom line is um, sink line, um, and garbage. garbage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, one of the students is asking here again, Stanislav, do you have any samples of your products that you can show us now? Like, do you have yes. anything in your office? One minute, please. Since you have a physical product, we want to see it. Yes. Uh, most of the companies that participate in Exculture would be more like service companies and they don't really have anything to show. So they, they, they deliver the service, but I mean, there is nothing physical <laughs> that you can see. So this is one, one, of, one example of our product. This is a bottle. The name is Crystal. Uh, it has one liter and uh, it's made from PP. Also. So what's the technology that allows it to keep the temperature of the, of the drink inside? Is it like multiple layers of... Uh, uh, no, we had a, a vacuum flask here inside. Uh, uh -huh. uh, the ampoule is the secret of the, the thermal bottle. Like a good quality of uh, ampoule um, made the product okay to use. 
So how many of those do you sell a year? I mean, are we talking about what thousands, millions? Like per month for how the one hundred piece per month. Per month. Ah. So one hundred pieces about only this model. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. In terms of the size of the company then, so what is your number of employees and revenue or, or some other in, you know, measures, like how big is the company? Today we have about 1,000 uh, employees. employees. About 1,000 uh, employees. 1, and then in terms of the revenue, are you allowed to disclose the, the figures? Like uh, are we talking about revenues in what? Hundreds uh, of thousands, I millions, tens of millions? I don't understand your question, please. In terms of the total revenue, like when you sell the products per year, so what is your total uh, sort of how, how much money do you get from uh, your products, uh, like uh, the combined total, revenue? Uh, uh, about uh, half a million. Uh, uh, five, uh, 500 million reais. Uh, of reais. And that's all only thermal wear or it's all of the products? about uh, about 100 uh, 100 uh, million of dollar uh -huh, okay. that's, that's extremely sizable okay okay um, a few more questions research and development um, how big is research and development um, bigger part of your business is it something that you have to do a lot of uh you know research or it's a relatively simple product you got it all figured out it's all about just manufacturing uh we analyze it a lot of our um competitors it's the principally research that we made we we know about what they are um developing and now we go through this to develop our products so developing a product like what you showed us, does it require a lot of sort of high tech technologies or is it more or less just basically molding the plastic into the forms? It's, it's molding the plastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't have a lot of research for the, the products. Okay. Now we want we have... to do this, we want to do more of this, but it's a little bit difficult to do this in the, the reality because we don't have a, a, a bigger, a, a bigger, uh, let's say, keep it. We, we don't have a big team to develop this, this kind of research here in Sopran. A related question also is here, um, are you planning to start making any other products, any other directions or not at the moment? So you have we, locks, you have furniture hardware, you have, thermal wear. Uh, so any, any other plans to add anything to your list? We want to improve our, uh, our, our business. Uh, so we want to uh, develop another product uh, in this year. Uh, for an example, we want to uh, improve our new lines that we uh, recently uh, uh, developed. And um, we want to uh, to uh, improve. and improve our uh, isothermal uh, products. Okay, okay. Now Sorry we have for our <laughs> poor English, but uh, <laughs> no, that's that's exactly what we want. I mean, we have every company this semester is from a different country, and. Uh, you know, differences in language and institutions and, you know, cultures. That's exactly what we want the students to experience. So no okay. problem at all. Nice. Now, we have a lot of questions about your geography as far as where you would like to sell your products. So at this time, you said most of your um, operations or mo most of your sales happen in the neighboring countries. So Brazil and the countries around. Yeah. Yes. So, but one of the questions you are asking our students to research is, are there any new markets where the products could be profitable, could be popular? So do you have any preferences for specific markets or would you be willing to sell anywhere as long as it brings profits? What, what is your, or are there any specific countries that you, are, that you are most interested in? So what's your sort of take on it? Uh, our, uh, our top one of selling is Brazil, but uh, it doesn't matter if we uh, sell for other countries, it's no problem for us. Uh, in Brazil, uh, an example, in Brazil, we sell a lot in uh, the north part of Brazil. 
in the spot. We don't have a, a structure in the central, central part of Brazil. And Brazil is huge. I mean, that's like the third largest country in the world or something like that mm -hmm. or fourth. Right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. There is actually a question from Andressa Roku. I think I'm not sure how to pronounce it correctly. So she says, hi, I'm from Brazil as well. I would like to know in which region Soprano is mostly sold and if uh, they know the reason why this number is higher in that region. So you said that you're primarily selling your products in the north. Do you know why? Is it just because you are there or? It's uh, because our uh, representations in the, in the north of Brazil, it's more strongest. Okay, so yeah. And again, Brazil, that's a huge country. I mean, we are talking like your provinces are basically the size of countries in Europe, right? And the yes. whole Brazil, it's probably the size of the European Union geographically, if you look like, yeah. you know, area wise. Yeah, the population is not quite, a, what's the population of Brazil? It's still, Brazil it's still like, is about, uh, mm -hmm. about 200 million people. Yeah, yeah, so that's basically the, you know, almost a whole, con or a good size of the continent. So it makes sense that, yeah, okay. So then for the students, as you will be working on the challenge, uh, one of the questions you need to answer is, which new countries uh, would be a good new market for Soprano, particularly, you know, in, with respect to, you know, high demand, little competition. And so the question to you would be, so what would be the attributes of the market that would make it suitable for your new sort of expansion plan? Does it have to be close because the shipping cost is high? Does it need to be, I don't know, certain cultural or economic, you know, conditions must be met? Like what would be the characteristics of the country where the demand for your product will be high? I don't know if you have any tips. I mean, it seems to me because it's a physical product, it seems to me some geographic proximity probably would matter because it's a, it's a heavy product, you have to ship it. And I su assume, you know, if you start shipping it to countries far away, the cost of shipping will be high. But I don't know, like for example, the United States, would that be a good new market? I mean, it's relatively close. Yes, it's a good market. Uh, we are trying to uh, improve our products for um, uh, another uh, characteristics. Uh, characteristic. uh, for an example, we, are, we have the only thermal box in the market that it's uh, stackable. You, you can put the, a product another inside the another products. You, uh, yeah, like, like, the Ru like the Russian matryoshka, right? Yeah. yeah Russian <laughs> yes. doll where they put one inside yeah. the next one. We have these this products. That's it's a big one. A box 28 liters. And we can put uh, the product inside another product. We, the, the box has this, this part that uh -huh. go inside it be another box. Uh -huh, it just kind of stacks up. It, yeah. And we, we can um, let, uh, lower, lower the, um, the cost of uh, shipment. Like transportation and storage. Yes. Yeah. So a box like that, that's what, what would you keep in it? So that would be like drinks, like when you go, like when you have a picnic, right? You can put all kinds of stuff just to keep it cold. Is that kind of what it is? Yes. yes. Yeah. So. Perfect. Uh, there is another question about manufacturing. I want to move into the business side, but there are still more, more questions about the product and, and production. So you said that you make the products yourself. Uh, have you ever thought about outsourcing the production or are you outsourcing any of the components, production of any of the components, or it's 100% made in-house? We already have outsourcing in some, pro in some components yes. of products. Like in an example, we, um, we, we released in this year a line called uh, Under the Sink. We, we call it here in Brazil Under the Sink. It's mm -hmm. like... Um, a dispenser from or uh, uh, I got a Fuji of a lot detergent. Yeah, yeah, like like soap, right? Detergent, and then we outsource this Make part of, of of the product. It's from China, an example. Uh -huh. We assemble here in Brazil, but we buy our parts from another parts of the the world. Huh. So this one that would be yeah, like detergent dispenser, right? Yeah. Yes. So, okay. Okay. Uh, a few more questions that we missed. Uh, so somebody asked the name Soprano, where does it come from? It's a musical term. I guess you said that you used to make musical <laughs> yes, instruments. Yes, yes, yes. So that makes sense. 
Yes, it's from the, the musical part we are already made in the past. Yeah, because when I first thought, you know, locks and uh, thermal boxes, I mean, how soprano is related to that, but yeah, I guess if you started with the accordion, so <laughs> yes. that makes sense. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. Uh, another question is about your retailing and distribution. So do you have your own stores? Do you work with the retailers, distributors? How does your sort of retail side works? We have retailers and distributors. We don't have uh, our own uh, our own stores. Okay, and and so and then a related question would be your promotion strategy. So how do you do marketing at this time? Is it a special you know separate department? Uh, is it a separate company that does marketing for you? And then more importantly, what tools do you use or what tricks do you use to to advertise and promote your product? We we have here uh, a marketing department in each unity, but we have um, partner. A partner, uh, companies partner. that made uh, the part of the, communication. uh, the communications and uh, other things relation with the marketing uh, things strategy. So, how does the advertisement work for your product? Is it mainly what like TV and radio, or do you do? No, 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 no not that. Work not TV. No. Why, why not? Because it seems like it's a general consumer product i mean it seems like uh, it's a very product. Product. Yes, because yeah, in expensive. brazil is very expensive the the marketing the tv uh -huh. so so how do you advertise example, your product uh, for an example you know one hour in at tv global it's the the principal um, okay. television show in brazil one hour in tv global, in TV global it's about uh, 300 uh, uh, 300 uh, Yes. Yes. So that's so. How do you advertise then? Is it what social media or social or media, like, basically? Social? Yeah. Huh, that's interesting. So, yeah, we had a few companies that have a product that is very specialized, and so for them it doesn't make sense to use broadcasting like you know like TV or radio for advertisement because it's a very narrow niche where the products would be sold, like some sort of IT services or maybe some special, you know, professional solutions, your products are more kind of general population product, right? So when you advertise, I guess you're trying to reach as many people as possible. So, uh, but yeah, it makes sense. If TV is too expensive, it totally makes sense. Uh, there it's is a question, easy, of, yeah, go ahead, sorry. It's easier for us uh, you to uh, use uh, uh, communication for, uh, for Instagram, for example. Yeah. Uh, instead of uh, use a uh, TV communication. Right, it makes total it's sense. More, uh, yeah, 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 makes absolutely perfect sense. Um, just a second, so there are several questions here. So when it comes to marketing, then um, you said you do it internally. You don't hire an external company to do it for you. Excuse me. So for for the for the marketing, so you do it all in house. So your own people uh -huh. do the advertisement, or you work with other companies like marketing agencies. That other, companies. other companies. Oh, for so example, you do outsource that? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, another question about uh, uh, production that I skipped. Uh, so somebody asked, in your total production cost, what are the different categories? Like for example, what is perc what percentage is the labor cost? What percentage cost? I mean, what percentage is the production cost, transportation, logistics, marketing? Do you have those figures? Like, what is your cost structure basically? Fifty percent is production cost. Mm -hmm. And so, within the production cost, how, how how much is the labor? Like, how much is the salaries or wages of the people versus okay, the machinery so and yeah. energy and whatever else? Around fourteen uh, percent. Uh huh that's the labor and then what are the other main expenses is it what electricity or uh, another uh, cost we have and it's so expensive for us is our logic logic uh, cost then this represents for us 15 percent uh -huh. okay that A makes lot sense. Of yeah. yes because How the problems are so big yeah yeah and it's a heavy product yeah yes yeah. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Now, in terms of shipping and logistics, so how do you normally ship them? Is it by train, by trucks? Truck. Trucks. Yeah, in Brazil, the principal uh, movement of uh, products is from trucks. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 
Okay, so there are a few more questions that I would like to ask about the challenge itself. And so maybe you can clarify what you expect from the students. So okay. I'm looking here, let me in fact open the document so that students can see it. So these are the questions that you ask students to, to work on. Uh, let me just one second, let me share the screen here. So when we look at the challenge here, so um, one question is, you know, do the competition analysis and you already provide some examples of the companies that are competitors, but then the students would need to do a little bit more analysis. So this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, identify new promising markets. We talked about that. So for the, it sounds like you're willing to sell anywhere uh, where the demand is uh, and the opportunity is. Although it seems to me the students will have to do some research how expensive it is to ship the product there. Are there any import tariffs? Are there any trade agreements in place? And then market analysis, uh, so the students would be asked to analyze the market, consumer preferences, uh, maybe some regulations in the market. One thing I would like to say the students here, to the students here is that when you will be describing the market, try to focus on things that are relevant to this specific company. So what we see sometimes in the reports that the students prepare is that they describe the country in general terms, like, you know, the languages, the religion, uh, the political system, the economic system. It's all interesting, but it's not always relevant to the company per se. So when you students will be describing the market that you think is promising for Soprano, make sure to talk about the things that are relevant to this company in particular. So maybe some special trade regulations, maybe some competition analysis, maybe something related to the customer tastes. Uh, like for example, in the United States, I know that thermal wear would probably be a popular product because Americans li like a lot of you know, picnics and parties. And so you always use those products you know, to keep the products chilled. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure if that's the same you know, uh, culture or the same approach in different countries. So those would be the things that you might wanna you know, explore more. There is a question about the market entry mode, and let's talk a little bit more about that. So when you will be going to different markets, uh, do you have a preference in terms of how you will be present in that market? Like, are you open to the idea of creating a whole subsidiary, maybe opening your own production facilities, maybe opening your own distribution centers? Or would you be more interested in just selling the product to the local distributor and let them do all the job? Like you mentioned, you have an office in China. What exactly do, do they do there? Is it more work with the suppliers or do they do some distribution for you? Can you talk more so, about that? In China, we work with the suppliers. Uh, we have a, a person there that uh, contacts with the supplier to negotiate the, the, the products, the, the prices and the... Um, yeah. And another strategy, uh, Soprano with China, you use China like a laboratory. Then uh -huh. uh, we, we buy, we import some products, we put in our uh, market. market, and we test. Okay, you see, if the result the is okay, we start to develop these products in China and production here in Brazil. Then yeah. uh, for us, it's a good strategy to know more than the market. Yeah. There is actually a related question here from Warren Johnson. Uh, so, and this one is, um, 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 just a second, just a second, there was one about labor cost. We talked about that. Um, um, so, uh, neighboring countries, uh, there was a question about uh, suppliers. So, where do your components come from? So, you said that some of the parts you buy from China, but when it yes. comes to the raw materials, uh, is that local or do you source it from somewhere else? Local. 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 And Brazil, so, so what exactly is used to make that plastic? Is it oil or like plastic what is the actual raw material? No, we buy the plastic from Braskin. Here, it's a big company here in Brazil that uh, has uh, representatives in another, in another countries from the world. But uh, our principal... Um, Supplier is Braskin. And so what you buy from them are those those little plastic granules? Yes. Like, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's how you get your stuff and then you just smell yeah. it. Okay. That makes sense. Yes. 
Okay, let me go back to the, um, to the challenge. And so there are a few more questions that we wanted to ask to make sure. So market entry mode then, would you be open to the possibility of uh, opening offices in other countries that would handle the distribution there? Or would you prefer selling the product directly to the customer or local distributors without any presence in the market per se? We have uh, another uh, office in Me Mexico. Mexico. Uh -huh. Then, uh, in Soprano in Mexico, we work with uh, uh, a Brazilian guy, and they are responsible to buy from Brazil and to buy to China and have the distribution. In another countries, we prefer uh, to work with uh, distribution. distribution. Then, uh, we export for them. Yeah. And uh, they have a, 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 a structure and a strategy for that market. Because uh, like in USA, uh, the different mar markets are different uh, strategies, different uh, uh, Culture. cultures, Cultures, different, yeah, yeah. different ways to distribute. And that makes perfect sense yeah, for you to learn yes. how it works in that country. It will be probably too expensive and too time consuming. So it's probably cheaper yes, to find yes. a local distributor that will do all the job for you, right? Uh, okay. A related question. So did you try selling your products in different countries outside your immediate region, like maybe using Amazon or some other online retailers, um, or that's something you haven't tried yet? We have this structure to sell by uh, marketplace. But now represents around two percent of our uh, sales. Okay, uh, there is actually a very interesting question from Stanislav here. So, what is your typical consumer or customer? Do you have sort of like a profile of your your typical well, buyer, or it's very different? Like, for example, he says, are those just general like uh, people who buy it for camping okay, or for I mountain uh, hikes, or it's more like for just storing food at home? Uh, I assume those thermal bottles, that's probably what people can take lunch with to work, right? To keep it warm or to keep it cold. So... Uh, yes. Depends the products. Uh, a bottle is more common a uh, uh, women to buy these products. Uh, a ice box is more common uh, a man. Depends <laughs> the products. Yeah, I have one of those bigger boxes that we use when we have like a little gathering at my house. That's where we put the drinks like beer or soft drinks. Yes. Just put a couple of, you know, like pour some ice in it. And then just to keep it cold, people just come and take one whenever they are ready. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we don't know the culture in the USA. Uh, yeah. For example, uh, we saw in the movies, uh, people in the, the parties using the, the thermal box to put drinks, like you said. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it's only in parties and, and big events, yeah, and family yeah. and like that. In Brazil, we use thermal box principally in the beach. Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah, I guess it uh, makes sense. The, the person go, goes to the beach at the the, the weekend and uh, take their thermal box with uh, a lot of beer and drink a lot of beer in the the day in the beach. Yeah, it's yeah. like, for an example. And it works works both for cold and hot, right? I guess the thermal yes. box that's mainly for keeping it cold, and then the mm -hmm. bottles probably mainly for keeping it hot. But it can be the other, you know, either way, right? Yeah, you can use in the, the both uh, ways. Uh, for example, uh, we use a lot for beer in Brazil, but we has uh, we already has a client uh, that asked for us to use um, hot uh, food inside to sell in the, the streets. Yeah, okay. makes sense. Um, all right, so then there is a block of questions for the students about marketing. And so one of the question asks to think about the pricing strategy. So how, let's say the students recommend, I don't know, the United States or Canada as a new market. So one of the questions is, so how much should it cost in that country? Are there any other marketing, I mean, pricing strategy considerations that need to be taken in, into account? But then the students are also asked to think about the promotion channels. And so I thought it was very useful. You said that, right, you know, TV or maybe magazines or maybe uh, radio can be too expensive. So for the students, again, my tip is think about the best way to advertise the product in a kind of cost effective way. 
even though Soprano is a big company, but nobody wants to spend too much money on marketing unnecessarily. And so it's always a good idea to think about a way that allows you to advertise cheaply and exactly to the potential buyers. Like going back to Stanislav's question, um, so like who are the consumers? And so he mentioned, you know, like hikers, uh, campers and things like that. So maybe if some of those products are specifically designed for, you know, like adventures in the wilderness, uh, maybe the advertisement can be done through like social media groups where those people communicate with one another or maybe some sort of product placement, you know, through the influencers, I don't know, like some famous travelers. So it seems to me like that may be a little bit cheaper and more targeted for that specific product. So my tip for the, or advice for the students is to think about, you know, which form of advertisement will give you the best return on investment. I mean, obviously with TV, you can cover a large audience, but it will cost so much that, you know, is it worth it at all? And so what would be the message that you want to um, uh, design? And then promotional materials. Again, one of the questions asks the students to maybe design some sort of a, uh, you know, example of what the ad might look like or what the maybe promo video script might look like. So uh, show us what you know here. And then there are a couple of questions related to logistics and trade regulations. Uh, so the company is asking, let's say you recommend a new market. I don't know, the United States or Canada what would be the best way to ship the product to that country? And also are there any trade uh, regulations like import tariffs or maybe some sort of certification requirements? So you would have to do your research and bring that information to the company because again, it may look like it's a great market, but if the shipping cost is too high or if there is a high import tariff in place that can change the whole you know, story here. And so, um, and talking about trade regulations and logistics, so you said that transportation cost is a big component of the price. Is that the case? Yes. So, yeah, uh, I assume again, uh, the product is big and heavy. And uh, yes. I guess like shipping it by air would not be an option, right? That would be like way too expensive. So it would have to be something like containers by truck or by train or something like that. For an example, uh, in the past we had, um, a design for the box like that, that form, that format, and we changed the the formats for this the other one that we showed to you, and we reduced the um, the, trans the transporta transportation about uh, four uh, fourteen percent. Yeah, only exactly. the design of the product. Yeah, and and that's a huge deal. I mean, you know, that's essentially your savings, right? So uh, that, that's a big deal. Um, there is a question here, again, um, uh, in terms of uh, tourism to Brazil. Uh, does tourism in any way affect your business? Uh, the question reads, does your company benefit from the increasing number of tourists in Brazil? So I'm not sure if it's... Today, we believe not. That's not uh, interferes. How about this whole scare with um, um, with the coronavirus? <laughs> buy more. Well, I guess you know your products allow to preserve food, so I don't know. Is it, is it having any impact on your business? Um, Bra Brazil is not affected. Do you have any cases of the coronavirus? We have. We yeah. have about two, two, two hundred, twenty-five, twenty-five. Case, but we have uh, about 200, uh, 200, oh no, 200, mm -hmm. 200 people. Uh, that uh, it's a um, not confirmed cases of coronavirus. Corona are arriving in Brazil now, starting now. We don't know uh, for 30 uh, long two months the impact for this. Yeah, no. Here in the United States, it's region, kind of... Our region is so bad and... Uh, because it's, it's in the south, yes. and the, the, uh, the weather is more cold and uh, it's complicated for us in uh, here in the, the next month. Yes. Because the weather is so... Um, uh, more cold. Huh? More cold. Yeah. More cold. Well, more for cold. you, that's still summer, basically, right? So it's still hot. It's yes. Nice yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're the other side of the planet, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and then also another question is uh, related to the uh, kind of geopolitical situation. So does that affect your transportation uh, and loss of profits? And I think the question is more about all those Brexits and uh, the wall be between the United States and Mexico. I think Brazil is a little affected, is a little bit less 
But again, all these oh, oh, know, political uh, developments, you know, the European Union is falling apart, the trade wars sorry. between China and the United States, uh, the, the, the tension because of the wall between Mexico and the United States. Is that affecting you in any way? Uh, no, it's uh, for the countries uh, uh, in Latin America, it's, uh, we, we don't have a lot of problems. Like for an example, we have a, a straight uh, commercial with uh, Argentina, uh, Paraguay, Bolivia, Chile. All these countries, we uh, are free to make um, business. It's very, uh, it's no problem. I assume uh, when it comes to Venezuela, so that crisis yes. does not affect you much or does it? Venezuela is a little even, further away. I know Colombia gets a lot of refugees from Venezuela. Yeah. Brazil, are you still getting some there? No. Not really, no. We yeah, don't. I, I hear we have some several companies from from Colombia, and so they shared that it's an issue. So you have a lot of people crossing into the country, and then it creates all kinds of humanitarian issues. But Brazil is a little further away, so I guess Brazil receives a lot of uh, immigrants uh, from these countries, but we don't have problems with um, marketing business with uh, other countries here in Latin America. Okay, we are almost out of time, but we still have a few questions from students. Uh, one of them is uh, competition and protection of your uh, uh, basically uh, intellectual property. So how do you protect yourself against uh, plagiarism and intellectual theft? And is that a problem at all? So does anyone try to copy your products? <laughs> they try to copy our products all the time, but... <laughs> really? Inside and outside of <laughs> Uh, and uh, but we have a um, uh, uh, it's not a company it's a um, how can oh, I say a a organ organ in Brazil that is called ENPI like the governmental agency yeah, yeah. governmental agency that we can register our products from uh, the design the the idea of the product we can register on ENPI it's the, like the a pa patent type of deal. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, another question, and that's a very good one from Warren Johnson. Um, what is your nearest port? So basically, if you need to ship your products internationally, do you have access to the waterways, to the ocean? Rio Grande or São Paulo, Santos. So the geography, how does it go? Like there is a river going to the ocean and from there you, you can ship it worldwide? Or how No, it it's, only, it's only in the ocean. When they arrived, the, the containers arrived in yeah. Sao Paulo, in the Rio Grande, uh, oh. it, in the, the middle of Brazil, in the south of Brazil. We have, they, we have these two uh, arriving uh, parts. So if we look at the map, I'm trying to share my screen here. Let's see, just okay. curious where exactly you are and how does it work. So if we go to Brazil, uh, what city, you said you're primarily in the north, right? I'm trying okay. to open the map here. So if we look at the map here, so you are uh, somewhere like uh, northern part? We are in the south, in the south. Oh, you are in the, the south? Yeah. yeah. We are here Mar -Mar. in the uh, Rio, Gra Paraguay. Rio Grande do Sul. State the Rio Grande do Sul. Uh -huh. Oh, so all the way in the south. Uh -huh. uh, here. Yeah. Okay, okay. And we have a port here next to Porto Alegre. Uh, 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 yeah, I see it. Yeah, I see it. And the, the another one is uh, nearest Paulo. from Sao Paulo. Uh, uh, okay, got it, got it, got it. And so then basically once the product is in Porto Alegre, it can be shipped they, anywhere globally, essentially. Uh, uh, and they come from the, the other parts of the country from uh, trucks. Yeah. Brazil is huge. I'm looking at Brazil. Yes, it's actually basically bigger than the European Union, right? Like yeah. area wise. I knew it's big, but I didn't realize it's that big. Like if you look <laughs> at it, it's basically, you know, like the entire EU can fit in Brazil. Huh, interesting. Yeah. yeah we invite you to know Brazil and Soprano. <laughs> we should come there. I've been to Brazil only a couple of times for conferences in Rio de Janeiro, only mainly mm -hmm. in that area. But yeah, I mean, it's a huge country and I imagine it's very different, you know, from depending on the region. So uh, yes, it's totally different. And, and you do have a co common border with Venezuela. I didn't realize that you bought. Yeah, actually, you do have yeah. 
so yeah right right okay okay well very interesting so i think we are pretty much uh done so there are a couple more questions so we talked about the ports there is one more question research and development are very costly and the competition is not sleeping how do you oh we talked about that the protection against the competition so um yeah i think we pretty much covered all the questions uh there are a few more questions from students uh from brazil so are you what would it take to get a job at your company like when you hire people what are you looking for what kind of characteristics would allow them to improve their chances of getting a job at your company any any thoughts uh, any suggestions é tipo quais são as características que um que a sobre are you looking for a specific like degree in education are you looking for something else yes we look for uh, depends of the job then we have uh, for, uh, many people working in our manufacturers then the, uh, we look for this kind of the person is more a person uh, with uh, knowledge in injection process uh, more technical mm -hmm. and when we look for the sales person we we uh, look for person with uh, graduation administration the engineer right. marketing and right. uh, we have a, a good opportunities for the people to start the first uh, job in soprano then uh, we are uh, working and to develop these persons uh, uh, inside soprano and uh, Thing so important for the the persons when soprano looks um, to to start work here is the the, the person the the, the the performance of the person uh, the values uh, so many uh, attributes we need is important to 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 work in soprano because. We, uh, in our opinion, it's important uh, soprano and the person work together. Yeah, yeah. Well, all I can say, guys, you students, you have an opportunity to write a good report and impress the company with the knowledge and the ideas that you have. And who knows, maybe they will read your report and will say, oh, who wrote this one? We want to hire that person. And it did happen <laughs> in the past. We've had cases when the students did such a good job that I would get a call from the company and they said, can I get the names of the people who wrote this? It's so good. We really want to hire them if they happen to be in my country. So I don't know. Try it. Try it. Yeah. Yeah. So what's going to happen now is um, the students have just started. So we just formed teams a couple of days ago. So they will be selecting the client companies uh, later this week. And um, I hope that Soprano will be popular and many students will choose your company. And then it will be sort of quiet for a couple of months because they will be working on the reports. There will be questions from time to time. And when they have questions, we will forward them to you. If it's a question that we know the answer to, we will just copy and paste the answer from our catalog of questions. But if it's a new question and we don't know the answer, we will contact you and ask for more information. And then I think there will be more questions towards the end as they're finishing up the reports, but we'll see how things go. And then if everything goes well, we should have the reports ready for you sometime in basically first days of May. And um, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully yeah. there will be a lot of good ideas there. So. With the okay. students, uh, again, one of the things in the challenge instructions is that uh, the company encourages you to not only come up with ideas, but also try to maybe talk to the local distributors, retailers, and see if they would be interested in maybe uh, distributing the product. So, for example, if there is a big, I don't know, chain of stores that sells this kind of product, maybe try to schedule an appointment with uh, whoever, you know, deals with the procurement there. So maybe they would be willing to get a container of those products from Soprano and try and sell them. And if it works, it can be, you know, a viable business line. So in addition to thinking and giving your ideas, maybe try to do your own market research and try to talk to potential buyers or distributors. Always a good idea. It gives you a good, you know, understanding of what works, what doesn't. And yep, we are very curious to see your, your answers and suggestions. It's be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. So we will be in touch by email uh, and let's see what the students come up with. And um, yeah, uh, hopefully they will come up with lots of good ideas for you. Okay. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.